I think we live in a culture, don't we, where we worry. We worry about everything. And uh, these words of Jesus, we've heard time and again, and we hear them and go, oh yeah, he's got a point there. And yet, we go back to worrying. Some of us will have worried about what clothes we were going to wear to come to church. Others of us would have worried about what we were going to have for breakfast. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever gone on holiday to a different country, on vacation to a different place. And the things Jesus tells us not to worry about, they become the most important thing. I remember going to Spain and uh, in Barcelona, and I was told, you know, don't drink the water. You have to buy the water from the store, which incidentally costs about 10 cents for a bottle of water. Um, and, and that was what you were to drink. You worry about what's in the food. Is this food going to be safe to eat? Can I eat the paella? Uh, um, or or will, will the seafood be contaminated? And we worry about what we shall wear. Uh, of course, it's really important on holiday to wear shorts with pockets in, so you can, you can put your, um, your wallet in there if you're a man. I know women don't always have pockets. Um, maybe you do. But, uh, um, but then, then you want to have shorts that, that have pockets with buttons so that when you're on the subway in Barcelona, no one's going to come along and uh, take your wallet out of your pocket just uh, and pickpocket from behind. When we're in our normal life, perhaps we don't worry too much, typically, about what we shall eat and what we shall drink and what we shall wear. Because we trust, don't we, that Superstore will provide. They'll provide for our food. They'll provide the clothes we need to wear. And they might even provide us a drink or two. As you see behind me, the lovely display of seasonal fruits and vegetables, a reminder of the abundant harvest that we all get to enjoy. And yet, in these last couple of years, we've realized as supply chains around the world have been disrupted by COVID-19, we realize uh, that um, this global network that we have uh, is beginning to crumble. It's fine if it works, but COVID comes in. And all of a sudden, the planes aren't flying. And we realize that it was the passenger flights from this place to that place that took the fruit or the flowers or the vegetables. And so the shelves begin to look empty in the stores. And we begin to worry. We begin to worry so much that we panic by. We run out of things. Remember panic buying last year. Not so much panic buying, but just trying to buy food. And, uh, um, and, and there was one store where they were limiting pasta to, to two packets per shop. Now, if you have a house with five of you, and three of them are boys, um, <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, it gets very tedious. You just end up having to go to the shop every day to buy enough pasta to feed the children because you can't buy it in one go. I'm not panic buying, I've got a house full of boys. Um, thankfully, that didn't last too long and they relaxed it to four boxes of pasta and, uh, and then I had to go half as often. But this sense of, of, of the, the feeling we've had for many years of not having to worry because the grocery stores would provide the food that we need. They would ensure the supply chains were working and we had our harvest at any time of the year and anything we wanted. That rug was pulled out from under us. And so many people have, uh, have, have worked to find more local ways to buy their food um, and, their, and their drinks. Um, but what about our clothes? I don't know if any of you watched the CBC Marketplace uh, documentary this week. Wave a hand if you did. Um, thank you, someone. Um, it's on YouTube as well, and you can probably catch it on CBC Gem or something. I'm not paid to say that plug, but I've watched enough CBC news that... That's where the programs are. You can find them online uh, or on your TV. So they, they did an article, a, a program where they talked about uh, where are our clothes coming from? How is it that we can pay so little for these things uh, that come from the other side of the world? And then what's in them? And they found in 
uh, handbags and purses and, and children's waterproof coats, high levels, five to, in one case, 20 times the toxicity that should be in, in an item of clothing. Uh, they're full of lead and chemicals and nasty things. So Jesus tells us, do not worry. And yet I think that we do have to engage our brains, just as we do with everything else as Christians. We have to think about where does our food come from? Can we find more local food sources that are not uh, in a store, in a packet? Can we support uh, agriculture in our community? Can we join a vegetable box scheme? What about our clothes? Do we have to get them from the other side of the world? Or could we find something closer to home? Can we reuse or, or keep something going for many years? Some people, this isn't an issue. Some people are quite happy to say, yeah, I bought that shirt in 1985 and it's still good. Um, other people like new things all the time. In this time of thanksgiving, it is good for us to reflect as the Bible uh, readings come out. They, they, speak, they come from a time that you know, was, was much more agriculture-based. Agrarian is the real word, isn't it? An, an agrarian society where, where what we should eat or drink are the things we should think about. And the message, of course, Jesus has here is, is not so much don't worry about food, but can you rely on God? Can you rely on God? And the illustration he uses of the, the, the flowers in the field, verse 28, they do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. It's easy if you're a flower. You don't have the influences that we have. The fashion magazines, the television shows, the social media posts telling you that what you're wearing is so last season. Uh, one of the great things about fashion, though, um, I find, is that these things come around again. Um, and so about once every, my favorite color is blue, and about once every four or five years, blue comes back in. And, uh, and I think this is a blue year again. Uh, so, you know, occasionally, I'm, I'm wearing the latest trend. Um, I have bought it a few years ago, but it's still the latest trend. Um, and I think as you, as you live long enough, you realize that these things come around again and again. And yet, this is what people are worried about. If it's not us in the pews here, it's people in the rest of the world. Where are they this morning? They're in the big stores, buying the latest clothes. They have to have the newest costumes. They have to have the newest clothes, the latest thing. Jesus reminds us to seek the kingdom. And as we seek the kingdom, can we be more like the flowers and the birds? Can we learn to give thanks and rely on our Heavenly Father who provides all things for us? So do not worry. It's easier said than done. Typically, if I get a headache, it's because I'm worried about something. Um, and uh, maybe that's true for some of you too. And maybe you haven't thought about it like that. But typically, if I get a headache, I think, obviously, there's something that's stressing me out. There's something I'm worrying about. And, and what can I do to deal with the cause of that stress? I had a terrible pain in my tooth. It started on Thursday. Or at least that's what I thought it was. And, and it carried on, and it got worse. Uh, so I managed to go to the dentist yesterday. Um, not so much that I managed to go to the dentist, but the dentist, dentist managed to see me. And, um, and the dentist looked at my teeth and said they looked fine. They got that, you know that mirror thing they use in the dentist? Hit all my teeth. Does it hurt? Does it hurt? Does it hurt? No, it doesn't. And, uh, and so then they did an x-ray. And so I saw um, my mouth and all my teeth on the screen in front of me. Um, and uh, it wasn't the best television, but it was interesting. I was looking, kind of going, I wonder what the dentist is going to say. And the dentist came up and said, yeah, your teeth look fine. Can't find anything wrong. 
sometimes the pain we experience in our body physically is tied to something else. So um, I've actually got a pain in my neck, probably because I slept funny, and that probably is what has caused the tooth to hurt. And so often, with worry, it can, it can, it can burden us. And you may not be worried about what to eat, or what to drink, or what to wear, but there are things that weigh us down. We worry about um, our families. We worry about our children. We might worry about our parents. We worry about our health. We worry about where we live, whether we be uh, wanting to live somewhere bigger, or wanting to live somewhere smaller, or wanting to live somewhere where the sun is on a different side of the building. We worry about so much. And I think it's so easy to read the Bible and hear the Bible and these words saying, do not worry. But I've never, ever worked out how not to worry. And I think that whilst I can tell you how not to worry, I can't honestly say I never worry about anything. The clue to the mystery, I think, once again, is verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. It's a lovely line. There's a lovely song. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Um, oh, sorry, that was out of tune. Uh, but there's a lovely song. You know it. And as we, as we think about that, it, it just kind of, we, we, can, we can miss that verse. I think that verse is the key to what Jesus is saying here. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things will be given to you as well, or will be added unto you, as the song says. When we focus on the kingdom of God, these other things will fall into place. When we're so consumed with prayer and reading the Bible and caring for the sick and the poor and, and so on, then we haven't got time to think about what should we eat or drink. Kind of like when you're, when you're really busy at home uh, doing a project of some kind um, and, and you, you realize that it's way past lunchtime and so you go and just grab a snack uh, to eat to keep you going. You feel so consumed with what you're doing. Jesus is saying if you focus on God's kingdom, if you focus on that, if you are thankful and grateful for all God gives you, if you spend time in his presence, then these other things will fall into place. And that's when we can get verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of his own, of its own. It's in seeking after God's kingdom that we find we, we spend less time worrying. How do we do that? It's the same typical three things. We read the Bible, we pray, we worship. That could be coming to morning prayer or watching at home. It could be spending time reading the Bible, reading Christian books, being part of life group. Life groups start this week. Um, and if you're not in a life group, um, I encourage you to think about joining one. Um, and if you really don't like other people and you'd like to study on your own, uh, then just buy a book and study on your own. The books are available. Uh, there's eight of them left. They're $15 each. Um, buy one and uh, do a chapter each week as we go through Luke's gospel, ready for the lectionary year next year when Luke is the gospel of the year. As we spend time uh, focusing on God, learning more about faith, as we do that, we have less time, less need, and less motivation to worry. We can be people who are grateful. And I think this is something we have to keep on working at all the time. It's not that we can learn not to worry at some point in our lives and then we never worry about anything. Things play on our mind, that's what worry is. So we have to make the choice 
time and again to step in, to step in in our faith, to step in in our relationship with God. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and then all these things will be given to you. Amen.